speaker of the day. So, Anya, I really thank you for being here. I feel very warmly connected with you. And I feel as if I'm talking to a friend. My show lights up every time you're there. And when you spoke during, at the time when Manish was there, it suddenly felt that you should be here. So thank you so much for accepting my invite. In fact, yours is the only interview that I went through once again just before talking to you right now. And uh, the reason I went through it because you've been through so many places and I sat down and I said, wow, have I missed out on anything? I've always felt this. People are not people, they are their experiences. But people with their experiences also have an attitude. I'm very blessed to get, you know, get to know you better. And I just feel I found another friend. And when you said so beautifully, I'm 66. If I can come close to anything that you look at 66, and if I last till then, I will feel blessed. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> you are sexy, man. And uh, something nice happened. Uh, as you know, I want to open uh, yoga classes for children and for adults. And I've been working on it. And I rented a room and everything. And as of next week, I have two first participants. So <laughs> it's a start. It's a start, yeah. Very good start. Hello, Arjuna. Hello, Arjuna. Okay. okay. Well, you, Anu, thank you for inviting me, and uh, it's a great, great pleasure for me. I, I feel like part of the family. I also feel I have known you forever, and we have never met before. And uh, the one who introduced me to this group is Rashi. Uh, who I had met in Pondicherry. Pondicherry, I think a lot of you know already, is like my second home. Unfortunately, uh, this year I couldn't go. Next year, no, this year I went, but next year is going to be a problem. I usually go in January. So let's see when I can back to India. But when I come back to India, I'm going to make a stop in Mumbai and see you all, and we'll have another cake and celebrate. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, so I would like you to take us through your life, Anya. I was very fascinated by what you told me about your childhood. Uh, so take me through your, through both your dads, the story of both your dads. And take me through the journey of your mom. And if you remember anything more than what you had told me on that day. Thank you. Okay. Um, you let me know how many minutes I have left. Uh, you have all the time in the world. I have scheduled this for as long as Manorama is there. You know, just be easy. Okay. It's not about the time. I just want to start a little bit to, to um, I had a, a very interesting life so far. And uh, it all started actually when I when I was asked to think about my life in a meditation in, I went to Kerala and uh, went there for a retreat and had a meditation session on paint your life. Wow. Now that was, I sat two hours in front of a piece of paper and was not able to draw anything. I mean, paint your life. I didn't know how to do it. After about two hours, I sat down and I said, okay, I can chunk my life into 20, 20, 20, 20 years. Because every time it was 20, something else happened again. And that was the first sign for me to maybe start painting my life. And then I realized that it was different life phases which I then gave a name to it. And so the first 20 years for me was authenticity. It's how I grew up and how I became the Anya who I am today. 
The second 20 years was everything about adaptability. And I'll tell you more about that later. And then the third chunk of 20 was faith. So, and the last one, which I'm living now, the next, the last 20 years, or I don't know how long I'm going to live, is gratitude. So I have these four chunks. And after having these four, uh, four, four chunks, I, um, just one second, I have here someone trying to call me when I leave. Okay, we go. And so then I said, okay, I have authenticity, adaptability, faith, gratitude. What do I do with this? And then I realized it was in different countries, everything happened. So I had the first 20 years growing up and that was in Africa. Then after that, I moved with my husband into all over the Asia and so on. I'll get into that. Then I divorced and that is where faith came in and today is gratitude. So all of a sudden I was able to paint something. So I painted all the different continents and put a name against it. And I was very happy that I, re <laughs> that I, I, I realized all of this by sitting in front of my paper. Now, I was born in 1954, so I'm 66 today. And uh, my mom uh, had married a, a German, I'm originally German. Um, a German gentleman and uh, after one and a half years of marriage and having me she decided to divorce and she then married uh, I don't know if you can see this can you see this yes we can this mom and my dad so here she went when I was born in 1954 so in 1955 she went to Africa to follow her love and not stay in Germany anymore. So he was Ethiopian and she was German. Her family never ever talked to her after that. They said, how can you do that? How you can go to Africa? And she was a very adventurous lady because if I think back, you know, going in 1955 with a freight, freight uh, ship or however you call that, there were no planes and nothing at that time, going to Africa to join her love of the time, which she had met in London before she married my dad. And so this is how I grew up in Africa. And... Africa was quite different also for my mom. I, I do talk a, a little bit about my mom because uh, I have lots of admiration for everything she did. Um, Anya, can I show everybody your photograph? The one you sent me. Photograph? This one? Give me a minute. No. In fact. Which one? I'll just send it. Oh, the the baby. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> This guy's, uh, yes, you can continue talking and I'll come online and get to it. Okay. So anyway, then um, we lived in different countries uh, within Africa. My dad was a diplomat, so he represented Ethiopia. I got to know Haile Selassie. And uh, so I spent my first chunk of 20 years in Africa. Now, I won't go into 100,000 details of all the different places I lived and what I did, but some key points in every country I was, I will pick up. Um, as a child, going to school and everything, okay, it was boring, I didn't like it, I didn't like school, and uh, I failed a lot of classes, and I didn't do well, and thinking of it now, where I had done an MBA and lots of um, good work all over. Uh, it's quite a contradiction of when I was a child growing up. And uh, 
the one thing I remember a lot when we were in Africa is I had a brother and a sister who were born after me. And uh, first of all, when my mom was in, in Africa and she went to Nairobi and there was black and white problem. And they said, okay, um, to my mom when she was sitting next to my dad, uh, the police stopped them and said, listen, you're not allowed to sit next to your driver. So there were many issues at that time when my brother was born, he was not allowed to go into the hospital where my brother was born. He needed special permission because there was hospital for white and hospital for black. So looking back, all this happened in 55, 56, 57. I mean, she was very courageous to come to Africa and go through all of that. And my sister, when she was born, she was born with a, a cleft palate. And uh, for us as children, we, we didn't quite realize what it was all about. But every year, my mom had to go to Germany for operations for my sister uh, from the day she was born and uh, we were always allowed to buy animals. And this is one of my nicest story I have uh, during childhood. I just childhood. want everybody to see this now. Nah? This is one. <laughs> yeah, I love this picture, so cute. Yeah, that was Anya. And uh, now Anya looks a bit different at 66, but uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> and uh, thank you for sharing, Anu. And um, so what we did every time when my mom went away, we bought animals on the road. And once we brought a crocodile and we, trans we put the crocodile in our bathtub and we transformed the whole bathroom into a jungle. And you can imagine when my mom came back uh, after the operation of my sister, she had a fit and we had to get rid of our jungle and the crocodile and uh, but it was quite an adventure for us kids anyway later on i married and i married a gentleman who uh, was uh, in the hotel business and uh, so we moved a lot around and this is my second phase when i talk about adaptability uh, oh, i had yeah, to before we go to adaptability can we just go a little bit behind is that okay with you Mm -hmm. So, your father, the second father, was a black man. Yeah. And there was already a lot of racism going on. How did that impact you? It didn't impact me at all. Because for me, whether he was black or white, or my brother and sister were black or white, it didn't matter. I had no, no, nothing to it. You know, it was my father. It was, I called him my dad and it was my brother and it was my sister. I grew up in between black people. They always called me, um, uh, in Ethiopia, they always called me, uh, how do you say that in English? Uh, uh, green cat eye because I have green eyes and, and the blonde hair, uh, which, a lot of Africans when we were in the jungle and so on, they like to touch my hair, you know, but it was the same with my mom who was white. And, uh, but you know, for me, there was not, until today, I have no difference between black or white or yellow or whatever for me. Thank a human you. Being. I needed this to come out because so yeah. much of racism, uh, a love does not understand skin. Yeah. You know, when my brother went to school and, uh, um, children would call him nigger and i said he his name is not nigger his name is andreas and i didn't even know the word nigger you know so for me it was everyone is a human being whether you're black white whatever it doesn't matter you know and so i always grew up at home with already all these colors at home and i never questioned because i didn't know anything else and i was one and a half when I started, you know, living in Africa. And so when you traveled with your mom, when you traveled with your mom and went all the way with her to find the love that she wanted from your dad, from your second dad, how did it feel? What do you have any glimpses, any remembrances of that journey? Well, 
I don't have remembrance too much of that journey because when they came together, I was really young, but there was always, there was no discrepancies or, you know, it was love and there was not black and white or anything. It, it, it was just a normal family for me. And I learned the language everywhere I went. So I spoke Kiswahili, I still speak the Ethiopian language and I learned the languages. I was like a local. And if people close their eyes, they thought that there is an Ethiopian person in front of them. And wow. now in Geneva, I went again into an Ethiopian restaurant and, and they are so astonished that I speak the language fluently without accent and anything but it was my home. I grew up there, you know, and so, uh, I mean, we did travel to different countries, but Ethiopia was our home country where we always touched base again. So if you remember your dad and could you, if you had to code back something for him and say, Hey dad, these are few lines for you. What would they be? That he accepted me as his daughter and oh you know, God hair I was white or whatever he just he also said to my mom when she divorced she he said bring Anya he didn't know me <laughs> you know okay I was a little baby bring Anya and come to Africa and this is what she did and uh, so there was also no fear on the side of my mom never she just went for it and 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 there's where I want to tie up at the end uh, where I had a big revelation after I talked to you, Anu, and I'll get back to that. It really uh, hit me in the face, but I'll, I'll tell you when I get there. Thank you. Anyway, so then I Go married... Ahead with the next part, yeah, of your 20 yeah, years. I married a, a, hotel, a hotelier, and uh, so we, we lived in, in, in lots of, lots of different countries. So I married in Dubai, and I must say that um, for me, going around, my motto of life, I could call it a lifelong learning. That is one. And the other one, no fear. I have no fear. I just went for everything when I thought it was the right thing to do. And that helped me through my life, going through the whole life. And not questioning um, how I will get there because I think the how will come when you decide that you want to do what you want to do. The how will come automatically when you need it. But just when you want to do something, just go for it. And this has been my motto my whole life. And so could you, could you say that, Anya, once more slowly for everyone here, please? That's really, really important because the biggest driving force today for people is fear. Fear of falling unwell, fear of dying. And then they talk about, oh, they really never feared death. That's complete crap. So could you say the words that you just said again? I hope I can, I can say them the same way again, but for me... I have never been fearful. That is the first thing, which is people ask me, were you scared? Were you, would? no, I just went for it. What, what can happen, you know? I mean, you can fail, okay, then you start new again, you try something different and never question. I think all of us can do things, but don't question how you're going to do it, just do it. And as you do it, things will answer, things will come to you. you. You don't start with, well, how am I going to do it? Then you go around and round and round and round. Just do it and go for it. And when you go for it, things will happen automatically. They come to you. I'm a, a great believer. It has always happened to me like that. I don't question why I'm doing something, I just do it because I need to do it. And then the why, someone else will take care of it. It will come on its own. Look, I rented a yoga room now. I'm paying a yoga room. I have no classes. And now I have two people signed up. Ye peep during Corona time. <laughs> so, you know, things will happen. 
And if they don't happen, they were not meant to happen. And then they're not good for you. So just change a little bit and try in a different way. But go, go, go for it, you know. Don't sit and wait for things to happen. Yes. And I hope at the end, remember I told you to, you should get a centimeter. Mm -hmm. Remember? Mm -hmm. So I would like you to get the centimeter out for the end of, the, for the end of my talk. Very important, this measuring tape. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so then... Lifelong learning. I married in Dubai and then I worked in Dubai. I worked with Japan Airlines. I never, my husband was director of a hotel. I never wanted to sit and have my feet up in the air and have a glass of wine and do nothing. I always integrated with the local community wherever I was and I always tried to speak the local language wherever I went. So I learned a lot of languages while going. Some I forgot, some I, you know, I, I, I still speak. And I think it's very important part that you become part of the community where you are. Because, you know, when you live in some countries like in Hong Kong or in all these places I lived, um, you, be, you, you, you can also go into the local German clubs or Swiss clubs, but then you never get to know the local people. So I avoided all these clubs and I just worked and interacted with local people. Unfortunately, um, I have my brother and sister passed away. So they were much younger than me, but that's a different story. And uh, I had a daughter, I have a daughter. She was born while uh, abroad also. So after Dubai, uh, we moved to Bahrain. In Bahrain, I took care of all the Benetton boutiques when I was there. So again, don't ask me. I had never been a ticket agent when I did uh, the work with Japan Airlines. I had never run boutiques and I became the woman in charge of all the Benetton boutiques. It just happened. <laughs> it, I did, you know, it just happened. I just went for it. Then uh, I lived twice in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, I did the most work I did was in Hong Kong. Uh, I taught Ikebana to teachers. I, I made, I, I, I gave lessons for teachers. I did lots of exhibitions in Ikebana. So Ikebana is a Japanese uh, flower arrangements. Then uh, I imported a chocolate from Canada. And, and all this was not for earning money because I had a husband who, who had a job, you know, but I didn't want to sit at home and do nothing. And, uh, and then also in Hong Kong, I um, imported, this was my first connection to India. I imported garments from India into Hong Kong. And that's where today, even sometimes I say, I'm so attached to India, uh, maybe in my, I don't know what life, I was Indian. I have no clue, but I feel so attached. Uh, my favorite meal is dal makhni. I could sit in a bathtub full of dal makhni. I love it. <laughs> I had dal makhni today. <laughs> oh, <you're lucky. laughs> That's my favorite food. And uh, so I like spicy food also. You know, I, I, I love to cook and uh, do all these things. Then after, I also, well, then Bahrain, then Hong Kong. I lived in Thailand also. In Thailand, I started uh, learning myself Ikebana and I did, uh, I did a lot of um, coaching in the museum uh, to, to, uh, for the guides so they, they can talk about the whole history of uh, Thailand. Then um, I also lived in Bangladesh for two years. When I went to Bangladesh, I said, oh my God, where the hell am I going? Uh, it was as poor as Ethiopia when I lived there. And there I had no working permits. So I was, um, how do you say, uh, you know, the Girl Scouts uh, in school. So I was a Girl Scout leader. So again, another profession. <laughs> Sometimes I got paid, sometimes I did voluntary, it didn't matter. 
Then I lived in Australia, uh, in Darwin. And everywhere I lived was about three, four, five years, something like that. So I was really integrated every time. In Darwin, uh, what did I do there? Uh, I did a pilot's license. So I became a pilot for little, uh, little planes. And uh, unfortunately, during that time, I used to take my daughter with me all the time. And she hates flying now <laughs> because I made her come in the little plane all the time and you feel all the bumps. And when I talk about no fear, I'll never forget when I had my first flight alone without my teacher. Uh, we came down, he said, pull over, I pulled over, he opened the door, he got out of the door, and he said, now go on your own and come back. So I went up, and then the tower was telling me all kinds of things, do this, do that, and I said, you know what, go to hell. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm happy when I come back down in one piece. <laughs> and when I came down, he said, you disrupted the whole air traffic. <laughs> and do you have a pencil? So please write down our phone number and call us right away once you have parked the plane. And they told me off like hell. But yeah, I then started flying a lot around. So it was a, a four-seater, huh? a, small, a small plane. And uh, so that was in, uh, in Australia. Then I was in uh, Turkey twice, once as a child and once as a grown-up. And I'll get back to Turkey in a minute. And in between, I was in Switzerland where I gave birth to our daughter. And yeah, and then Tahiti, I was twice in Tahiti, once before I married and once during marriage. And then going to Bangladesh and here and there, I had Big sur I had surgery on my back and everything because of lots of problems, but now I'm fine. But then all of a sudden, I, something went in my head and I said, you know, we're living, I'm living every four or five years in a different country. I had a cook, I had a driver, I had a nanny, I had everything. I lived in the hotel. Every time I went into the hotel, I ripped out a bathroom and made a kitchen out of it. And because I wanted to have my own thing, I traveled with one ton of, of, of stuff. I didn't want a, a towel of Sheraton or whatever in my room. And then I said, you know, all this, the friends, we had everything was so artificial. Nothing was really ours. The friends were our friends because they wanted to be invited into the hotel. Everything was artificial. And I said, I, I, I can't, I need to change. Now, where do I divorce? I wanted to divorce after 17 years. And I said, where? I lived in Hong Kong, I lived in Thailand, I lived in Turkey, I lived here, I lived there. Where can I divorce, you know? I mean, where's home? Where do you do things like that? My friends were all over the world. And I had no one wherever I was, you know, I had here a friend, there a friend, wherever a friend. And then, <laughs> this is a nice story also, we were in Hong Kong and uh, we were supposed to go to Bali. And I packed up everything in the house with packers, everything was packed and a fortune teller came. And she said, Anya, what is all of this? And I said, yeah, it's, we're going to Bali. And she said, no, you're not going to Bali. And I said, what do you mean we're not going to Bali? Everything's packed, we're going, we're ready to go in a month's time or whatever, you know, we're moving into the hotel and we're leaving. No, no, you're not going to Bali. Okay. And what happened? Uh, a week later, we were told that Bali is not on anymore. And, uh, and this lady said to us, this fortune teller, she said, you're going to go in a city with lots of church towers. I said, where is lots of church towers? And it was Istanbul with all the mosques. Wow. And it was just amazing, amazing. And this woman also told me, and I don't know what to think about it, but it ties in a little bit maybe with the end of my story. She said, Anya, you're an alien. 
Now, what is that means? I don't know. She said, you're an alien. You're not from this world. This was the final thing after telling us that we're going where a lot of church towers are and you're an alien. My daughter loved when she said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an alien. <laughs> and she sometimes still repeats it, mommy, you're an alien. But it was quite funny to hear that and I didn't know what to do with it. Anyway, we moved to Istanbul. And I said, okay, here are all the church towers. It was just, wow, you know, when I think of it, I get goosebumps. It's amazing. We, we spent half a year in Hong Kong waiting to find out where we're going to go. And half a year later, we went to Istanbul. And this lady knew that half a year ago. And I don't know, it was strange. We come to Istanbul and I said, okay, that's it. I have to make a decision now. And in Istanbul, it was quite easy for me to, to divorce. It took me exactly two days to divorce. <laughs> so it was uh, attached to the Swiss law. And again, I didn't ask how it's going to happen. I just decided it has to happen. And so what happened is that I was in my bedroom lying in bed at 10 o'clock at night. I got out of bed. My husband said, where are you going? I said, goodbye. I'm not coming back. I was the general manager's wife. I walked out of the hotel, out of the lobby at 10 o'clock. Everyone said, where the hell is she going? I called my driver. I said, come and pick me up. I called my friend. I said, I'm coming to your house. And I told my driver, I said, tomorrow morning, you bring my child. And that was two days divorce and it was done. Next question, where am I going? <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> and it all happened one after the other. I wanted to stay in Istanbul, but I said, I can't because two blonde ladies, my daughter's blonde too, and two girls. It's not going to work in a Muslim country. I don't know. We have to see what to do. And she was 11 years old. She had always been in American schools. We spoke German and French at home, but she couldn't read and write it. And I said, okay, where can we go? I could have gone to Timbuktu or I could have come to Mumbai or whatever because I've lived all over, you know, where do you go? Where's home? So, because I don't really have roots. I've never been long enough somewhere to have roots. So I decided to go to Germany. I said I was born there, so let's try Germany. My mom was living there. And uh, then we went there. Uh, because my husband was working in the hotel business and uh, some people found out that I divorced, they said, listen, we can organize for your job in, uh, in Munich. So I went to the Sheraton in Munich where a job was waiting for me. When I arrived, I said, no, thank you. I don't want the job. I know you have to give it to me. And unless I don't find something else within the next three months, then I will come back to you. But other than that, I will try and find my own way. Within two days, I had a job. Within one week, I had a flat. And the how came. I didn't ask how, it just came. So I just went for it. I didn't look left, I didn't look right, I just go. And today I can say I never regretted what I did. I had a wonderful time with family, with my husband, everything. And there was a moment to change because I didn't like that lifestyle. And I have never regretted what I did. Uh, in the contrary, I have uh, flourished in all kinds of jobs. Uh, you can look up my name, you find all kinds of awards I have received of the industry and, and so on. I have done a lot. I come back, that was the third where it was faith. You know, I had authenticity, adaptability and faith because I said somehow it's going to happen. And when I divorced, I was 40. And 
I had no friends when I came to Munich. I, I knew my mom was there. That was all. I had no one. And I had no, you know, so it, if you if you separate and you're in the town where you have friends and you have family and you have this and you have that, you have a lot of support. I had hardly support. It was just me, my daughter. And so, but we managed, it went well. It was not easy in the beginning because uh, I had to hire a student out of a higher class to teach uh, German to my daughter to read and write so she can get along in school. And she did tremendously well. And she's a great, great, great personality now in the job, what she's doing. Um, I have two lovely grandsons. And, uh, and now I'm 66. I'm starting, I've uh, retired. The last 12 years I was working in Geneva. Uh, now I'm back in Munich and uh, lived there, uh, started a new career again with yoga for children and yoga for adults. I transport uh, bone marrow and uh, stem cells around the world to help uh, cancer patients. And uh, I just wanted to say in my free time, but I don't really have free time. Um, here in Geneva now, I have been asked by the Hotel School of Geneva to, to uh, look at some of the works which the students do in their last uh, age, in their last uh, class before they go into their profession. So I do exams with them together and oral and so on. So that's why I'm here at the moment. So I, I am very busy. I don't know where the time is running. And uh, getting back to, to, to um, Anu, the thoughts which came to me after we hang up the phone was quite scary. Um, Thank you for I, sharing those because I that am, really happens at times, yes. I am a hundred percent copy of my mother i realized and why did i realize that after we stopped talking was a she traveled all over the world also uh, like i did she had no fear she just went for it all the time like i did I had, she had uh, three children, um, two of them passed away, I'm the only one left. I had three children, but mine two died while I was uh, still, they were not born yet, so I have one left. Oh my God. I say, shit, look at all this similarity. And this is where I say maybe, yes, maybe I am an alien. I don't know. It's very strange because it is everything. She divorced when she was 40 and came home with the children. I divorced when I was 40 and came home with, went to Germany with my daughter. And it's all exactly the same pattern. And I'm trying to figure out what's the meaning behind of all of that. I don't know. Very strange. So this is Anya. Wow, Anya. That's, that's just amazing. I just want to ask you a few questions before we say, call the other speaker and allow others to ask you questions. So Anya, you went across the world having your experiences what according to you is what according to you was the best place and the best experience the best place and the best experience yes. is wherever i am now wow people ask me where was the best place you've lived in it's where i am now wonderful i'm a person who lives in the now and every place has is good and it's bad and it's whatever you know um i've the moment i go somewhere i feel home 
did you ever find another man in your life or did you have a need to? No, I don't want mans now. Uh, I have boyfriends. Good. <laughs> and I just want you to talk about that because you know why? There are a lot of people who get out of one relationship and jump into another one. So if you can throw some light on that, that would help a few people to make their decisions. I don't know. I think, you know, it's for everyone to decide. Um, I'm, I'm, sometimes I say something which is maybe not correct, but often I think man and woman are very different. And are we really made to be together all our lives together? Or are we made just to see that there is more population in the world and to make babies? And I think we're, we're responsible for reproduction, but I think uh, there comes a moment where we, have to, where we live our own lives. And that doesn't uh, mean you can't see another man or have another boyfriend or affair or whatever. It's not about that. I think you have to be happy within yourself. Yes. I'm happy within myself. Uh, I don't need anyone. I, I'm, I'm me and, and I have to be happy and with what I'm doing and look how often I have said already uh, since we do, you have started with this talk, Anu, and, 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 and your, all these sessions, I always say, thank you, Corona. I have learned so much in this time which I used to, the last 12 years when I was running the convention bureau in Geneva, I flew all over the world. Sometimes I didn't know uh, which airport I am in, where did I go, where have I been, like a crazy woman trying to get business for the destination, which was fun. But you know, it, it was time now for the whole world, I think, to stop and rethink a little bit what we're doing. And I'm grateful for the time we had now to think and to reevaluate uh, whatever we are doing. And uh, I think the nicest thing for me is to say I have no regrets whatsoever. I have done everything in full faith and love. And, and yeah, and the family I have now is my two grandsons, which are adorable kids. And, uh, and, uh, my son-in-law, my daughter, and, and it's fine, you know, and we all have to live our own lives. You cannot say to someone, this is good or this is bad. You have to feel it yourself. And I think if you feel you should be doing something, don't be scared, just do it. And that's when, when you have this measuring tape, okay, how long is this measuring tape? Can someone tell me? I mean, is it, it's normally a meter, no? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so when you take, you should all take a measuring tape and it's quite, I, I, someone taught me this exercise. I think it's quite, uh, because the measuring tape is one to 100, okay? Okay, now me, I am 66, okay? So at 66, I cut it. This is how much I have left to live, okay? Wow. If I'm going to get ever 100, so you might even cut away 20 or whatever. This is all I have to live. Question, how do you want to live the rest of your life? Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Over to everybody, if anybody has a question for her. That would be wonderful if you have a question. Unmute yourself and please ask Anya. Anya, you were brilliant. Thank you. Merci. Anybody has a question for her? Okay, the audience is very... Hi, I, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, hi, Anya. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Very, very, very interesting. Um, I guess my question is when you say, you know, just go for it. So what if you find yourself just going for something, but then you keep um, seeing one obstacle or the other? And so you, you're on your way to go for something because that's what you felt you should do. But then it seems like there's so many people and so many things, situations that are against you. Well, you know, I... 
I covered my divorce in five minutes, but it was a long black tunnel. And it's not an easy time um, mm. when you decide to, to do and to change. But I think if you keep on your path, and if you really believe this is what you should be doing, then you just go for it, finish. And don't listen what left and right or mom and dad or whoever is telling you, because only you are living your life. No one else is living it for you. And only you know what's going on in yourself and with your partner or your husband or whatever. No one can look into all of this. No one. And even your very best girlfriend and your mom and whoever. No one really knows everything about the whole situation except for yourself. And you have to be authentic to yourself and say, listen, this is what I want to do and do for it. Go for it. Finish. And don't listen left and right. And, you know, everyone will have an opinion. People said to me, Anya, how can you leave a thing like that? You had a driver, you had a hotel, you everything. I said, yes, it was a golden cage. I didn't want that anymore. That was my definition of it, you know, and I didn't want to do it. Now, other people would have stayed and said, listen, yes, I have everything. It's fine. I have a driver. I have a cook. I, have a... I didn't want that. It was artificial for me. So I think you have to be, you know, stand on your own legs and say, what do I want? I don't know if I answered your question, but it's really only you can decide for yourself what you, what you need to do. No you, one. You did. You did. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you. You just lit a light and something. I'd like to speak to Anya. Please go I'm ahead. Very, very good evening. Uh, uh, at which point of life, I'm not talking about the divorce, at which point of life did you realize that, yes, I've arrived? I'm successful. I'm the complete me. Which point of life did you feel it? Um, I think now. Wow. The faith I'm living and now I have arrived. And Wow. And it's lonely at the top, but then we have uh, overcome vertigo too. <laughs> Excuse, I didn't hear. What did you I say? I said it is lonely at the top. However, we have overcome vertigo too. We are we are not scared of falling, of scared of heights. Yeah, it's yeah. lonely at the top. Yeah, it, it is lonely at the top. Yeah, but then I think yeah. everybody yeah. looks very small and very tiny from those heights. Yeah, but you know now I I live alone and. I love every moment of it, you know, because I have time for myself now. I, I really must say, I, I, and Anu knows, I, you know, I, I do painting classes now. I, oh God, I do so many things and I have time for it now. And I really feel fulfilled and the days just fly by. I, you know, I say, shit, another week is gone already. <laughs> And, and we have I the entire house to ourselves. We have the entire house to ourselves. We've got the whole bathroom. We've got the whole bed. We can place yeah. anything where we want. And that's our day. Yeah, but you have to be careful. Because um, like now I had uh, uh, been two years alone. My mom passed away within those two years when I came back from Geneva after retirement. So a lot happened the last two years for me, which were not easy to go through. And I also live in, 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 in the flat where my mom used to live, you know, and so it has many ups and downs sometimes. And, but I have to be careful getting used to this living alone, which I enjoy. And then my grandchildren came and turned my whole flat upside down. Wow. And it, ooh, you know, you, you have to get used again to, to having woo, all this around you when you've been alone, you know, for yeah. such when a... When children period. come home, we realize some things move to. Else they just yeah. kept there. All the artifacts are kept, but when the children come in, they move. So we yeah. realize yeah. these things can yeah. move. Through. But it's you know, in... In 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 uh, Japanese, they call it ikigai. You know, it is the you Asian people. You you live very long. You work very long. You know, it's when you stop doing things that the life stops for you. You know, you have to continue and 
work and do whatever you want to do just do you know your own like look i mean how much do i have left so much you know it's not much <laughs> and it flies so just do you know whatever you want to do and go for it and yeah it's I, I just otherwise you know we have the stagnancy comes in and then we have fungus which comes over water still waters yeah, yeah, then we really have fungus moss comes over we don't want that exactly. we should be like the river just flowing and flowing keep doing exactly. anything that pleases you yeah until work work time. yes and until you drop dead finish I, I think so many of us over here are doing the same thing i know dr manorama i know gawa kimia teji most of us are doing a lot of things yes absolutely we have vasavi who has two questions vasavi go ahead yeah i have two questions first of all thank you for sharing your story it was very inspiring for me uh i have two questions the second one may be a little too personal so i leave that up to you to decide if you feel comfortable answering the the first one is um as someone who has been divorced and who also uh was a child of parents who were divorced um is there any message that you would change after your divorce if you could go back in time to when you were a child when your parents divorced is there any other insight you got about divorce which you felt as a child you didn't you did not have when your parents were divorcing no i had all the love um i could get from both my parents and mm -hmm. uh, i never felt uh even after the divorce i never felt neglected or anything i mean and again when my parents divorced i mean my first father okay i i don't remember but my mm -hmm. father um it was my mom's decision and i said if she wants to do it that's what she wants to do it's her life finish you know i mean who am i to say don't do it or whatever it's her life it's okay. not mine wow okay thank you for that and i had another question and it was basically i i loved how you said the how will come to you i i really love that and uh i i really want to know so you you said it you it was a long tunnel of course but you decided in 2 minutes that you wanted the divorce and you got it and you did it and i was just i wanted to know maybe after 17 years i think you said you were married for 17 years um whether what made you come to that what made you leave at that point because you were there for 17 years and what made you make that quick decision whether it was because i finally by because i finally came into a country where it was divorce because when okay. i was in hong kong or in bangladesh or wherever uh, being uh, i have two nationalities swiss and german nationality um it was not always easy to to do what you want to do you know because of the local laws and this and that and in istanbul uh they adapt to the swiss law and so it was easy for me there to to get divorced you know and so that's why i said okay this is where i'm going to divorce but again i didn't know where i'm where where will i be going what will i be doing i just said this is it finish and then the the why and the how and everything came later i mean the why i knew but the how came later and uh i think I don't know I've always been someone who decides and then I go for it you know and then if you make mistakes you learn from them and then hopefully you don't do them a second time but um if you don't try and if you don't do nothing will happen in life and it's the same when you're looking for a job or whatever or you want a child or whatever you know you just go for it just go for it and then what can happen i mean what can happen you fail okay you try again or you say it was not a good idea but the only one who can 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 do something about your destiny is yourself no one can do it for you no one not your husband not your children no one 
everyone has their own life. The, your husband has their own life. The children have their own life. Uh, I cannot talk for anyone, you know. It's, I can only talk for myself. So beautiful. So wow, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Anybody 